If everybody can do me a favor and stand to our feet. I want you to do something collectively for me. If we can just say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. I want to I wanna say something really quick before I take my text. Many of us, and I believe my wife alluded to it, and I believe my brother-in-law alluded to it as well. We come to church expecting someone else's voice. I need y'all to hear what I just said. We come to church expecting and desiring somebody else's voice. What do I mean? We come to church and we need somebody to pray over us. Somebody, somebody else, say somebody else's voice. We come to church seeking the praise and worship leader to take us a place where God is asking ourselves to take our own selves. Somebody say somebody else's voice. And then we come to church and I'm not knocking this, but we want the preacher to preach a word to us. Say somebody else's voice. But the greatest gift that you can give God is not you coming to church to hear somebody else's voice, but for God to hear your voice. Somebody say my voice. And here's what I want us to do, because this is the opportunity for us to all participate in worship. The Bible says that he's seeking true worshipers. So if anybody did not get a chance to open up their mouth and declare something to their God, I want us to do it in this moment. Lift up your hands without the clapping of hands, but begin to give adoration to God. He's seeking your voice. Father, we bless your name. God, we honor you in this place, God. Collectively, God, we bless your name, God. You've been seeking our voice. Matter of fact, God, your word declares, God, that you're seeking true worshipers in this season, God. So, God, we don't want to be found not worshiping you, God. God, so we lift up your name. Come on, lift up his name in this place. Come on, everybody should have with the fruit of your lips, begin to bless his name. Begin to bless his name. Begin to bless his name. The Father is seeking your voice. Hallelujah. 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 We bless your name. I want to say something real quickly. Take up, the, take up your Bibles. I want us to go to Luke chapter 8. The good news is when you give God your voice, he knows how to find you. So many of us go running and looking for answers in certain places. And God is saying, just give me your voice and I know exactly how to find you. Oh, that's good news to me. Uh, somebody needs to be found by God. And God is saying, I just need your voice. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 8. It's so good to see everybody in the sanctuary this morning. I want us to go to verse 42. I want to look at the latter portion of verse 42. I'm going to be reading verses 42b through 48. It's on your screen if you don't have your Bible, but we got to be in the habit of at least bringing some technology so that we can see the text. Because how many of y'all know that preachers can preach something and we don't know that it's not in the book? But if you don't have the book in front of you, you never know. So we got to make sure that we, we're in the book. Somebody say, get in the book. The Bible declares this. I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. But as he went, somebody say Jesus, the multitudes thronged him. And now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed in any way. I don't know, somebody may have been praying. Somebody may have been asking their prayer partner to touch and agree with them. They've tried all they can, but they could not be healed in any way came from behind and touched the board or some virgin say the hem of his garment and immediately somebody shout immediately her flow of blood stopped and Jesus said who touched me and when all denied it Peter and those with him said master the multitudes throng and press you and you say who touched me but Jesus said somebody touched me for I perceive power going out from me somebody say he knows how to find me Ooh, that's good news now when the woman saw that she was not hidden she came trembling and falling down before him and she declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she was immediately healed and Jesus said to her daughter be of good cheer your faith has made you well go in peace 
The Bible says in verse 47, Now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. How are, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to minister from this subject this morning, the opportunity in our press. The opportunity in our press. I want you to tell your neighbor that there's an opportunity in your press. My wife talked about this, that we're coming to the close of a year, and, and I need us to understand that many people, and most people view the closing of the year through two lenses. It's, it's two lenses in which we view the closing of a year. Some view the closing of a year through um, great reflection, great reflection, because of declarations that may have come to fruition, desires that were fulfilled, and deeds that we were faithful to. So we look back over the year with great reflection. But there's another group of us. Somebody say another group of us. That, that view the closing of a year with remorse and grief. You've got some folk that have this grateful, grateful reflection, but there's many of us who view it through grief and remorse. And somebody may be saying, why? Because of obligations that we let go of, obstacles that we failed to overcome, and opportunities that we lost out on. I don't know if you've ever experienced a year and you look back and you said, God, that was an opportunity that I lost out on. There were some obstacles that were set before me and I failed to overcome it. Uh, uh, somebody say grief and, remorse. grief and remorse. Most believers find themselves in this place. And I need you to understand the, the latter is also where the enemy wants us to remain. Many believers look at the close of a year in grief and remorse. And this is where the enemy wants us to say, somebody say why? And I, I want you to understand that it can cause a believer to lose their fight in God. You've ever had so much grief, so much remorse over what you did not accomplish, and I lose my very fight in God? It causes many people to lose their faith in God because God told me some promises that I will see over the course of the year. You said that greater is in me than he that is in the world, but why did I not overcome this obstacle? So we lose our faith in God. And watch this, when you lose your fight in God and your faith in God, it will cause you to lose your favor with God. Yes. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. And this is why the enemy wants to keep us in grief and remorse. It's not so much our fight, because somebody say, I can't beat, I can't beat the enemy. That, that, that's God's work. It's not so much the faith that I have because the Bible says that he's given each man a measure of faith. Somebody say a measure. a measure. What the enemy wants you to do is lose your favor with God. Somebody say I need his favor. So, so we've got to change the lens in which we look at the close of a year. This means we negate our rewards from God when we posture ourselves in remorse. No fight and no faith. Uh, and this is why despite where we find ourselves in this journey called life, we cannot lose our press. Tell your neighbor, I've got a press. I've got a press. I know, I know that may seem, seem like church jargon or cliche, but we've got a press. That means no matter the overbearing predicaments, we've got to press. No matter the overwhelming problems of this year, somebody say, I got a press. And no matter the ongoing occurrence of pain, somebody say, I must press. I must press. Because watch this, there will be times that will require our press. Yeah. See, we want it easy in this journey called faith. This, this thing called Christendom, we think it should all be easy. I got folk praying for me. I'm a minister. I've been walking with God for so long. But there's going to be some stops in the journey where it's going to require you, somebody say, to press. See, we don't like that because we want it easy. But God is saying, I'm requiring your press. This is the place where we find ourselves fatigued. If somebody finds themselves fatigued this morning, that's a good place. Well, we find that our fight has waned. When I can't pray like I used to, when I can't labor in his word like I used to, uh, that's the place where we find, and even where we find ourselves frustrated that we what, of what we failed to see fulfilled. 
Y'all know how we have all these lists about what we want th this year to look like? And then we look back, and it looks like we've got more disappointments than desires fulfilled. Somebody say, I get frustrated. I get frustrated. This is the place where the Lord wants us to press. And here's what I believe. This is a place where we can realize the power of God if we're willing to press. We can realize another level of God's power if we press. Here's one definition of the word press. I believe it's on our screen. Notice what this definition says. To apply force to something or move something to a certain spot or position. I believe God uses our press to put us in position to see his power. And many of us don't see God's power in this way because we're unwilling to press. Somebody say, I wanna, I got, I've got to press. Oh, I've got to press. And some of us wonder why folk walk in a certain level of power. Maybe it's because they press and you chose not to. It's gonna move me to a certain spot or position. So whenever I feel frustrated, whenever I feel fatigued, whenever I feel like my fight has given up, really what God is saying, I'm trying to put you into position to see my power. Oh, that's good news to me. Oh, that's good. And so, so this is what I want us to understand, that some believers are unwilling to press. Therefore, as we close out 2021, I want to reveal why and how there is power in our press. I don't think it's by coincidence that they keep saying that there's another variant on the way. We felt like we had just got over this. And now they're saying that there's another variant on the way. They're saying that the economy is on the brink of being in shambles. Biden don't want to cancel no student loans. Somebody say, I need to press. So, so, so God is putting us, I'm telling you, we've got to press. Hey, I got some student loans that I need here to press delete. Oh. <laughs> I got some, y'all. But watch this. When Biden doesn't have the power, God does. So maybe he's just trying to put us in a position, somebody say, to see his power. Oh, that's good news to me. So, so here, here's what we're going to examine. We're going to examine that we receive oil in our press. Uh, we're going to examine that we've been ordained to press. So even when you feel like you can't press, somebody say, I've been ordained to do it. We're going to talk about the outcome of our press. But this morning, I want to examine the opportunity in our press. Somebody may be saying, why is this significant? Because the believer that is not open to press is the believer that misses out on the opportunities for God to move. Uh, so, so, so in other words, our press presents opportunities for God to move in the life of a believer. And I believe these opportunities are revealed in our foundational text. This woman with an issue chose the press and then the Lord chose to move on her behalf. She had an issue, but she chose the press. And I need y'all to understand a little something about this woman. She pressed despite the crowd. The Bible says that the multitudes thronged him. She pressed despite her condition. The Bible says having a flow of blood for 12 years. Some of y'all women don't want to come out when you have a flow of blood. Somebody say she pressed. She pressed. I'm just being real on this morning. So she pressed despite the crowd. She, she pressed despite her condition. And then the Bible says she, dis, she um, pressed despite her calamity. The Bible says she spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any. What am I trying to say? All of us are without excuse. Yeah. Somebody say, I'm without, excuse. I'm without excuse. Despite what folks say, girl, don't worry about that, that, he, that I've got to press. Yeah. When people say, no, that's just too much. Somebody say, I can still press. Can still press. Despite, the, despite your condition, wherever you may find yourself, God says you can yet press. I need y'all to understand something about this condition in the text. Whenever a woman was on her monthly cycle, she was considered, somebody say, unclean. She was not even supposed to be outside at this time. But despite her condition, some of, some of us are so concerned about our past and what people think about us and what people say about us and their viewpoints of us that it causes us not to press. We believe that we negate ourselves from what God has set aside just because of somebody say of my condition. 
And despite her calamity, many people believe because I failed time and time again. I tried this and I tried that, and it still did not work out. This woman said, I'm going to press. Say I'm without excuse. So we all eligible, y'all, this morning, no matter the crowd, no matter our condition, not even no matter our calamity, we can, and watch this even more, I believe we're called to press because we're without excuse. So here's what I like to do. Anybody who's here for the first time, I like to walk the text. I feel like I'm a teacher of the Lord's word. My wife calls some, me some otherwise, but I'm a teacher. So I'm about to say I'm a teacher. All right, so I'm going to walk the text. Let's look at verse number 45. The Bible says, and Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him said, master, the multitude strong and press you, and you say, who touched me? Here's what I need us to understand in this text. Our ability to press in the face of adversity, watch this, gets the attention of God. Did y'all hear what I just said? Whenever I press in the face of adversity, the good news is that I get God's attention. Many of y'all are trying to get God's attention in every other way rather than pressing. Somebody say, I get his attention. Oh, that's good news to me. That means it's not how well, watch this, it's not how well you pray, it's not how long you plead, and it's not even, it does not even matter the people that you're connected to. Because some of us think that because folk have this modicum of relationship with God, that I've got to be connected to the pastor for God to get my attention. Somebody say, the devil is a lie. All God is looking for is my press. That's good news to me, y'all. I don't know about nobody else. That, that's good news to me. This is why when this woman, watch this, simply touched the garment of Jesus, he declares immediately, who touched me? What am I trying to say? Your press doesn't, watch, watch this, just, just doesn't get the response of God, but he recognizes you by your press. Somebody say, my press is personal. Did y'all hear what I just said? It doesn't just make me recognized by God, but God, not, not just the response of God, but God recognizes me. Who I, I noticed, you know, I was connected to this pastor in the city, and I went to go to his church to do something that was not necessarily involved with any church business, but he acted like he didn't even know me. And I said, brother, we connected on social media. Don't act so high and falutin like you don't know me. But the good news is that God doesn't treat us that way. God is saying, if you press, I will recognize you as my son or my daughter. Yeah. Oh, that's good news to me. Somebody feels like an orphan to God, and God is really saying, just press. I says he identifies you and knows you by your press, just as he knows your name. God knows, listen, when my son or my daughter tries to wake me or my wife up in the morning, we recognize their touch. Yeah. It's like manner with God. Yeah. When I press, God recognizes me right. and he makes me distinct from my wife's press. Yeah. Yeah, that's and many of us are trying to get to God, watch this, through somebody else. Yeah. Okay. We feel like we need a conduit. We feel like we need an intermediary because I know my sins. I know my past. I don't pray like Minister Serena. I don't know the word like Pastor Keith, but God says I'll recognize you. Watch this by your prayers. That's, that's good news to me. I don't know about anybody else. In other words, your opportunity in your press is that your press invokes the perception of God. Notice this definition of perception. The Bible says the ability to see, hear, or become aware of something through the senses. God becomes aware of my situation. This is why the crowd didn't matter. The commotion didn't matter. Think about this. Think about the fame of Christ at that time. And the Bible used to say when he would go from city to city that the crowds or the people knew he was already coming. So despite the crowd, despite the commotion, the Bible says that he knew, despite all these folk around him, not that many people touched me, but that somebody touched me. Yeah. I want to be in a place where even though many folk may be calling on God, God will know, know that my daughter touched me. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody say it's in my press. And many of us miss out on the opportunity for God to recognize us because we're unwilling, to, somebody say, to press. press. 
Notice this. And neither did this. This is good news to me. I said, neither the crowd, the commotion didn't matter, and neither did the commentary of the disciples matter. Do y'all do y'all see that in the text? The disciples said, Peter said, Jesus, all these folk around you and you talking about who touched you? How many times have many church folk tried to dis dismiss somebody who was trying to get to God? No, you don't look the part. Oh, you, you don't sound apart. Matter of fact, you only been here a few weeks. God is not concerned with the commentary of other people. Watch this. Somebody say, when I press. When I press. Oh, that's good news to me. Some folk that uh, count you out. Some folk that thought you um, were ineligible to be touched by God. Because it was her press. Watch this. That caused the Lord to perceive her. So hear this. That means when God seems distant, it may be because he's requiring your press. Did y'all hear what I just said? Many folk think that God done left me. I know the Bible says that he'll never leave me nor forsake me. But maybe when God seems distant, he's requiring your press. Maybe when God seems despondent, when you've been calling on him, when my wife said, talked about you've been tarrying for him, maybe it's because God is requiring your press. Yeah, yeah. And even when you feel, watch this, detached from God, maybe it's because he's requiring your press. Because here's the good news. God knows how to find you when he finds you pressing. Did y'all hear what I just said? God knows how to find you when he finds you pressing. And many of us don't like to be in this place where we're vulnerable. Where we feel like I don't have any other choices. Where I don't know where to turn. Somebody say that's a good place. God may be trying to orchestrate a situation where he can find you. So when resources run out, when you feel like folk don't have the answers to your questions, maybe God is trying to find you. Somebody say, find me, Lord. Find me, Lord. Huh? Consider the response of Jesus to Zacchaeus after he presses despite the crowd in Luke 19.5. Now, notice what the Bible says. The Bible says, and when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, think about this, Zacchaeus, somebody say, was a little man. Why would Jesus look up in the midst of all this crowd? It, it, it could have been, I know he couldn't have heard Zacchaeus um, going climbing that tree. He probably showed enough, didn't see him. But the Bible says that he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down for today I must stay at your house. I need y'all to see there's a lot in that text. Notice this. Not only does the press of Zacchaeus cause the Lord to identify him, but the Lord gives him instructions and an invitation. So, so he says, I identify that Zacchaeus is in the tree. But watch this. He gives him instructions. Somebody say instructions. The Bible says make haste and come down. And then he says, he gives me an invitation. Somebody say an invitation. For today I must stay at your house. So watch this. Maybe the reason you don't have the answers to get yourself out of the place that you're in is because you did not press. God will release the, watch this, instructions and invitation when you press. And many of us, watch this, we want to sit and soak, we want to be sad, we want to say that I don't want to talk to nobody, I don't want to see nobody, and God is saying you'll never get your instructions, and watch this, you'll never get my invitation. And you know what, we like to say this, I'm just setting up an atmosphere for God to come on in. I don't want nobody bothering me. I'm God. It's, it's just going to be me and God. Yeah, it's going to be you and your own behind because God is not going to send you instructions and he's not going to send you an invitation. Somebody say, I just got to press. I just got to press. Oh, man. And watch this. And here lies one of the reasons why the enemy does not want you to press because he knows that you watch this, get access to God's divine plan. And it's all dependent upon your press. How many people have been in situations where I don't want to go out the house? Where I don't want to talk to nobody? Where I don't want to pick up the phone? Where I don't want to be around the other believers? And the enemy, watch this, makes you feel comfortable there. Because the enemy knows that God's going to release his divine plans if I could just press my way. If I could just wash my face and get out the house. If I could just put on some clothes and make it into the house of the Lord. If I could just find a way, watch this to say hallelujah. God says, I'll give you your divine plans. Oh, that's good news to me, y'all. Somebody say divine plans. 
And this is why Paul encouraged the Corinthian believers with these words in 1 Corinthians 15, 58. I believe it's on our screen. The Bible says, therefore, beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Because your ability to watch this press will always cause you to prevail. Even when you don't feel like it, somebody say, I got a press. I've got a press. Oh, that's good news to me, y'all. And watch this. Because when God is aware of the life of his child, he gets active in the life of his child. Did y'all hear what I just said? I know he's omniscient. Somebody say all-knowing. I know he's omnipotent. Somebody say all-powerful. I, I get all of that. But what God is really saying is that I'm looking for those that will press so that I might identify you. And when God is ever aware of our lives, watch this, he gets active in our lives. Y'all know how some folk can see you going through and they'll say, I'm praying for you and never get active in your situation. God doesn't leave us that way. He says, when I'm aware of what's going on, somebody say he gets active. So the first thing I need y'all to understand about our opportunity and our press is watch this, that it invokes the, the, the perception of God. Now let's look at verse number 46. The Bible says, and Jesus said, somebody touch me, for I perceive power going out from me. One of the reasons that the enemy wants us to stop us in our journey is because the enemy don't, does not want us to receive strength. Did y'all hear that? One of the reasons why the enemy wants you to stop is because he knows if you press, you'll receive strength. Somebody say, I need strength. So, so, so notice this. Uh, this is why Isaiah um, 40, 31 declares this. He says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Because hear this, your deposit of power is received at your decision to press. The reason why many of us have failed to receive power is because you have not made a decision to press. And you feel like I don't have the strength to do this. I don't have the power to do this. You don't know what I've been through. And God is saying, I just need a decision. And then he deposits power. This is how the old saints used to get through. Somebody say they ain't have no resources. They ain't have what we got. You know, the new church got screens and all of this. We, they ain't have all of that. They made a decision. This is how we, I'm telling you, my wife talk about it all the time. We struggling with two kids. Somebody say two kids. Y'all grandmas had about six, seven, eight, ten, twelve kids. And we wonder how they made it through. All they said, I'm going to trust in God. I'm going to depend on God. I'm going to keep trying to feed these babies. And God, all he did was deposit power. These, these old saints, these new saints, boy, that's why y'all ain't got no power. And, and notice this, this word wait in Isaiah 40, 31 is an active verb. Somebody say active. It means to wait expectantly. It means to wait eagerly, and it means to wait with endurance. In other words, somebody say, press. So Isaiah 40, 31 reminds us that his power is promised to those who press. Oh, that's good news. And this is why one of the opportunities in our press is that our press imparts the power of God. And here lies one of the reasons why many believers fail to see a CJ and got power. Uh, watch this. One of, the, one of the reasons that many believers fail to see his power is because, watch this, many believers fail to press. You want power, somebody say, you got to press. You've got to press. And here's what the enemy wants you to believe, that you're going to fall out of the race, that you're going to faint, and God says, all I need is a decision. If you give me a decision, because watch this, your strength is not up to you. Somebody say it's up to God. And many of us, when we get in situations like this, we think that the strength is up to us. And the enemy, somebody say, that's where the enemy wins. That's where the enemy wins. Watch this. We've got too many, watch this, too many believers waiting on God to send them power, but God just might be waiting on you to press. Did y'all hear what I just said? We sit here sitting some us, Lord, we love to sing the song, Lord, send your power, Lord. And maybe God is saying, I'm waiting on your press. Because as soon as you press, somebody say, he deposits power. He deposits power. Notice, how do I know? Somebody maybe say, how do I know? I always give you a Bible. Notice what Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says. Come to me. Somebody say, that's a command. That's a command. 
all who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. And the reason you fail to get rest is because you fail to come to him. Watch this. That means, watch this. This word rest means he takes over when you can't take no more. When I can't take no more, God says, I'll take over. And many of us are still believing that it's up to me. The reason why, and watch this, really what that is, is somebody say that's pride. And the Bible says he resists the power. And the reason why you ain't got no power is because you failed to let him take over. You still trying to figure it out in your own means. You still trying to work it out through your own intellect. And God is saying, just give it over to me so that I can take over and I can watch this. Give you rest. Somebody needs rest this morning. Somebody say, I need rest, God. He says, come to me. Come to me. Uh, That means God brings his power when we press. That means your power, watch this, to get over the divorce is waiting on your press. Your power to get over the disappointment is waiting on your press. Listen, I received some disappointing news this week. And I told Pastor Cole and I told my wife, I'm okay. And the only reason I'm standing here today is because God deposited power. And many of us fall out of the race. And we're waiting on God to give us power. And God is just simply waiting to take over. I said, God, I don't have it. I don't know. My prayer this morning was, God, I don't understand. I don't know. I need you. We've got to get to the place where you ain't trying to figure out what to pray, when you ain't figure out trying to figure out what scripture to read, when you ain't figuring out what trying to preach you need to listen to. Just tell God, I don't have it. God, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. God, I don't have it. And as soon as we let go, somebody say he takes over. He's going to impart power. I received the level of power, y'all. The power to get over the, the, the death is waiting on your press. Watch this. And this is why the enemy wants you to sit in a corner somewhere and be sad in certain seasons. Because he wants you to negate your strength. Well, somebody say the devil is a lie. Notice what Jesus says in verse 46 of our foundational text. The Bible says somebody touched me for I perceive power going out from me. Why is this significant? This is good news to me, y'all. The degree of your press doesn't determine the degree of power you receive. Did y'all hear what I just said? The degree of your press ain't got to look like Pastor Keith. It ain't got to look like Mother Alvera. It ain't got to look like the evangelist or the apostle. The degree of your press does not de- determine the degree of power that, God, that you receive. Watch this. The Bible says that she only simply touched, watch this, the hem of her gar- his garment. Oh, and verse 44 says, immediately her flow of blood stopped. All we have to do, watch this, is give God any portion of our press. And watch this, any portion of his power is just enough. Did y'all hear what I just said? Yeah. It, I need y'all to catch this because y'all ain't going to receive it. That means if your press is only learning how to wash your face, the degree of power that God sends, somebody says it's just enough. If all my press is, is opening back up my Bible that I've set on the shelf, somebody say his power that he sends is just enough. See, my press might be, I got to get to the church, I got to get on the altar, I got to be there for three hours. But listen, your degree of press does not determine his degree of power. I hope somebody caught that. I hope somebody caught that. So here's a word of wisdom. Our opportunity for power is so significant because if the Lord doesn't give you power, you're subject to perish. Somebody say, maybe saying why? Why, why, why? Because watch this. In seasons of fatigue, this is where the enemy attacks. And he attacks with the intent to, to kill, steal, and destroy. And this is why we need his power. The Bible says that the enemy goes around like a roaring lion seeking, somebody say, whom he may devour. So that means he's selective in who he attacks. So this is why the enemy wants us to stay in the place of fatigue because we're the ones that the enemy attacks. 
and all we've got to do, watch this, is get out of position of fatigue so that we won't be attacked. And when he attacks us, he does it to kill, steal, and destroy. So this is why we need his power. And his press, watch this, gives us access to his power. Y'all staying with me? I believe I got it on the screen. Look at what Luke 9, 1 says. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them. Somebody say he gave them. Power and authority over all. Somebody say all. All. Demons and to cure diseases. Here's what I'm trying to say. Uh, Demons, watch this, are not intimidated by your song. They're intimidated by his strength. Y'all got to catch what I'm trying to say. Demons are not intimidated by how much words you know. They're not intimidated by that little song you know how to sing. They're not intimidated by that. They're intimidated, watch this, by his power. So in order to watch this, to fight off the attacks of the enemy, I've got to press. And the reason why we got to drag some of y'all behind out of the gutter, some of y'all behind off the floor, some of y'all behind in situations, somebody say that I put myself in, is because you were unwilling to press. Y'all making folk work too hard. Tell your neighbor, don't make me work that hard. I'm going to come get you, but don't make me work that hard. Watch it. This word power in our foundational text is the Greek word dunamis, which means miraculous power. Tell your neighbor, I ain't got that kind of power. It's miraculous power. It's miracle working power. And the only way you get miracle working power is from the miracle working God. And I want to say this, and I want to say this real good. The enemy is not intimidated by your anointing. He's not intimidated by your gift. He's intimidated by the dunamis power of God. And I need God to deposit his dunamis in me. And all I've got to do, somebody say, is press. That's good news to me, y'all. And watch this. If we can be honest, there are some setbacks in our lives where a song won't do. Well, scripture won't do and our sacrifice won't do. We need the miracle working power of God. Y'all ever been in a place where you listening to worship music and it don't hit the same? Y'all know how the young folks say that hit different. <laughs> uh, that, that song ain't hitting like it used to. That scripture that my mama gave me ain't hitting like it used to. Because this is the place where God wants to deposit. Somebody say dunamis. So here's what I need us to understand. God needs us to press as we close this year. And the opportunity in our press is, watch this, is that it elicits the power of God. It imparts the power of God. Now let's look at verse number 47, and I'm going to be out your way. The Bible says, now when the woman saw she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed. Somebody say, immediately. It's important to note that the motivation for your press is not simply to pull through a season. All right, that, that can't be your, 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 all your motivation. But your motivation should be, is the press, watch this, should bring you into his presence. It's not to pull me through a season, it's to get me into his presence. Many people like to be pulled through and then get into a different kind of season. We, how many times have we pulled folk out of seasons and they get themselves back into another season? No, 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 no. I, I, I'm pressing so that I can get into his presence. Not just to get out of a season. And this is why we find ourselves, watch this, in cyclical problems. Because you come to God to pull you through, but you do not come to God. Um, you do not press so that you might remain in his presence. Somebody say there's a difference. I want to get into his presence. And somebody may be saying, why? Because it's his power, watch this, that will pull you through, but it's his presence that will keep you through. Did y'all hear what I just said? His power will pull you through, but I need, I need somebody to say, I need some staying power. Some staying power. They, yeah, these saints ain't got no staying power because you don't know how to stay in his presence. Watch this. Exodus 33, 14 declares that there is rest in his presence. Deuteronomy 4.37 declares that there is redemption in his presence. And Judges 18.6 declares that there is reassurance in his presence. Because it's one thing to receive strength, but it's another another thing to receive staying power. Who tell you, neighbor, I want staying power? And that's only received in his presence. Notice what happens in our foundational text. 
The Bible says, now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling, falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. Not only did her, pre watch this, her press bring her into the presence of a healer, but her press made her heal and present. Did y'all catch what I just said? Not only did her press bring her into the presence of her healer, but watch this, it made her healing present. I, if I'm going to go through, somebody going to see me come out of it. I want folk that talked about me, that slandered my name, that said I would never make it. I want to make my healing public. Oh, that's good news to me. And here lies a sad tragedy for many believers. It's because they're unwilling to press. Not only, watch this, do they negate being in the presence of the Lord, but you fail to make his presence known in the life of others. It's really not so much about the folk who talked about you, but really what it does, it makes the presence of God known in the life of somebody else. And God is saying, you're going to let me do all of this? You're going to let me deposit doomless power in your life? And you're going to keep that thing hidden? That lady said when she found out that she was no longer hidden, whoo, that she came out in the presence of all the people. Somebody say, all the people. All the people. And watch this. She didn't hide the reason that she had to touch him. She wanted folk to know that she had been healed immediately. Yeah, Many of us are so ashamed of where we've been. But God is saying, I ain't trying to get folk to know where you've been. I'm trying to tell folk about the power that I have in my hand. And we, watch this. When you don't press, you negate his presence. And then you negate his power being known in the life of somebody else. And maybe somebody, and I, and I, I don't think that he, he minds me saying this, and y'all, I sweat easy, so don't mind me. I told Jeremy that, that, the, that the God, God's hand is on his life. And that's, I said, it's going to be some folk that I can't reach. Right. And it's only that you've been called to reach. Yeah. And watch this. If he's always ashamed of where he's been at, there's somebody that needs to know the dunamis power of God that'll never know it. And watch this. Maybe the reasons we don't see miracles like we do in this contemporary church is because we make his dunamis power, somebody say private. Y'all want to see folk laid out with sheets on them. But God wants somebody to know how they took the taste of drugs out your mouth. God wants somebody to know that you was running around sleeping with everything that would open their legs. And now if you learn to be faithful to one wife, God wants somebody to know that it's dunamis power. Somebody say still works. But you keep being private with that stuff. Watch this. Hear this. So the critical question we got to ask ourselves, as a matter of fact, notice what Psalm 106.8 declares. I believe it's on our screen. Nevertheless, he saved them. Somebody say, not, not for my sake. For his name's sake. Watch this, that he might make his mighty power known. So the critical question we must ask ourselves is how have we made his name known? Not by how well you pray. I, I, I'm so glad that my wife don't be up here trying to operate in gift. But she be, she's up here trying to declare the goodness of God in her life. Trying to somebody say, make his name known. Make his name known. Make his name known. So we've got to ask ourselves, not how well we pray, not how accurately we prophesy, but when you've pressed, yeah. did you make his name known to someone else? And here's a word of wisdom. Some of us never get to this place, and y'all know we're, a lot of preachers like to preach this, where God can prepare a table for us in the presence of our enemies. Because watch this, some of us are unwilling to press. Because the table that is prepared in his presence, Rosh gets you to where your table has been prepared. Did y'all hear what I just said? The table that is prepared in his presence gets you to where your table has been prepared. Somebody say, it's his presence. It's his presence. He does the preparing of the table in the presence of your enemy. So that means I need to get to his presence so that I can be at the table that he set up for me. Somebody say, I got to get to the table. And if I want to get to the table, I've got to get to his presence. 
Ah, the enemy wants you to be ashamed of your current season. And even more, he knows, watch this, that there has been a table set up for you in this season. Hear this. The Bible says that, that, that he prepares. And, and, and really, if you look at it um, in the Hebrew, it's, it's past tense. So that means the table has already been prepared. So God has set up the table for you. You've just not come to eat. God is saying the table has already been set up. And all you got to do, somebody say, is press. It's already been set up. Your table has been set, but it requires somebody to say, my press. Watch this. Even more beyond what's prepared for you, the critical question you must ask yourself is, do you desire his presence? Y'all heard me. Do you even desire his presence? Because if you desire his presence, that should be the motivating factor to cause you to press. Right. Did y'all hear what I just said? I don't need nobody telling me, Keith, get up, wash your face. No, I desire his presence. I don't need nobody to tell. I don't need T.D. Jace. I know he preached good. I don't need Jamal Bryant. I just need to know that I have a desire to be in his presence. Amen. Right. And watch this. I know y'all don't like this. But we're filled with many churches with people who don't really desire his presence. We desire what he can do for us. We desire all the things that he gives us, but not many folk really desire his presence. You'll be able to handle a whole bunch of drama in this world if you could just start, watch this, desiring his presence. Juanita Bynum declared these words in her song. I believe this must be our desire as well. She said, in your presence, that's where I belong. In your presence, that's why I made strong. Do you belong to be in his presence? The pre his presence has to mean that much to you. Watch this. Because without his presence, we lose too much. And this is why David declared in Psalm 51, 11, do not cast me away from your presence. He knew how much his presence means. And this is why the opportunity in our presence is what, watch this, is that there's an invitation into his presence. That's good news that God will give me an invitation to come into his presence. All I got to do, somebody say, is press. press. Hear this, I'm done, y'all. But I need us to understand, we've got to press as this year comes to a close. Despite how we may feel, there are seasons, watch this, in life that demand our press. And I believe there are seasons in life where the Lord desires our press. The only way you're going to get on the other side of this, somebody say, is press. It's press. And God, watch this, because... He's omniscient because what catches us off guard does not catch God off guard. There are also seasons that he orchestrates that he desires our press. I know we don't like that, but he does. Somebody say he does. He does. So watch this, because our press provides opportunities for God to move. Yet many believers never see or experience the degree of the Lord's move in their life because many believers fail to move to press. And this woman in our foundational text moved the press and it provided opportunities for the Lord to move in her life. Watch this. Her press provided an opportunity to invoke the Lord's perception. Somebody say, he sees me. He sees me. It, it, it provides an opportunity for the Lord to impart power. Somebody say dunamis. dunamis. And then watch this. It's an invitation into the Lord's presence. Yet I believe the good news is that there's always a promise on the other side of our press. Many, many of us don't believe that there's a promise, but somebody say there's a promise. There's a promise. Consider what Jesus declares to this woman in verse 48. And he said to her, daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in. Ah, I want y'all to know it takes faith to press. It's going to somebody say it takes faith to press. Because when your situation don't look like it's going to come out good on the other side, somebody say it's going to take faith to press. You may not feel like it, but it took some faith to get your behind up this morning. Somebody say, it takes faith to press. Some situation is going to take faith. And watch this, God recognizes her faith. And watch this, he extends favor. Yes. Stay with me, y'all. He extends favor. So here's what I'm trying to say. Your press provides the Lord an opportunity to ensure your peace. Yes, Lord. Thank you. you thought that was going to take your mind out. Yes, Lord. You thought you was not going to be the same after this. Yes. But the Lord says, I'm going to ensure your peace. Somebody say, I got to press. Let us stand to our feet.
I want y'all to understand, and I say this quite often, whenever I preach a word, you best believe that the enemy will attack us concerning this word. And I believe this is a corporate word. And I say that to say because of what's going on in the land corporately. This is going to be a season where there's going to be things that will come in days ahead where it's going to cause us to be fatigued. We thought that we had just came out of this. And God is going to say, I need you to press. And watch this. Our press is going to provide God opportunities to move. I believe that the people of God will be covered. Somebody say amen. amen. Let us pray. Father, we bless your name. I thank you, God, that you demand our press, that you desire our press. And there are seasons, God, where that is both in like manner in our lives. So, God, I pray, God, for your people. Some of them are dealing with personal struggles, as this woman with the issue of blood um, was as well. And I pray, God, that they will press. Somebody shout press. So, God, that we might make room and opportunities for you to move in our lives. So, God, we thank you, God, that you recognize us by our press. Thank you, God, that your perception of us changed as a result of our press. Thank you, God, that you impart power. There's somebody that wants to give up in this season. But, God, you're imparting power even now. And it's dunamis power, miracle working power. And we thank you for that. And, God, I pray, God, and we thank you, God, for the invitation now. That we might come into your presence. And God, all that we need is in your presence. And God, I encourage the believer now that there's a promise on the other side of their press. There's a promise on the other side of their press. And God, that promise is peace. They'll make it out with their mind fully intact. They'll make it out, God, with their thoughts fully aligned with your word. Because God, there's, some, there's a peace that surpasses all understanding. And God, we receive this word today. We receive your instructions today. God, we receive your demand and your desire for us to press. And every believer, don't say this if you don't believe it. But if you that believe that to be so, say thank God. Amen. And amen. Give God a hand clap of praise.